let me first give a disclaimer, <laughs> legal, you know, <laughs> disclaimer, to the class and also to you, internet, pay attention, um, which is that I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to try and explain as best as I can. All of the things I'm about to say, they're all publicly available. That's actually most of how I know this stuff, right? So Board of Studies, um, they've got like a big guide on how my HSC marks are calculated, um, most of which is where I got this from. And um, UAC as well, University Admissions Centre, because they're the guys who decide the ATAR, okay? They also publish all of this, okay? So I'm not, this is not like kind of super secret knowledge that I'm sharing with you. It's all there, it's just that it is, it is quite complicated, um, and it was hard for me to understand. It took me a while, like, reading it all. Um, so that's the first thing, it's all publicly available. And secondly, um, because it is actually really complicated, I'm not going to explain all of the details. It would literally take me days if I went through everything. Um, and I know that because it took me days to read it and process it and try and understand it. So I'm just going to try and give you like an overview, like a simplified version. I'm going to sort of um, skirt over a lot of the finer details, but I think you'll still get the basic idea. Okay. So here's, here's basically, there's, there's kind of three problems. Um, that explain why you do your HSC and you get some marks, right? But they have to do all of this weird stuff to your marks and um, adjust it and um, muck around with it before you get your, your final thing, okay? Uh, and the three problems, they're all problems of comparison, okay? So the first problem is trying to compare schools, okay? So how do we fairly compare schools when the schools obviously are different? They're different in lots of ways, okay? Um, the second problem is about trying to compare um, one cohort from another, okay? So you're the 2013 cohort. Well, how do you compare with the 2012 cohort? Or the 2014 cohort that comes after you, okay? Um, and lastly, it's about comparing subjects, okay? Because all subjects are difficult uh, in different ways, and they're difficult to different levels, so how do you fairly compare them, okay? So they're problems of comparison. So to try and put this in like concrete terms, okay, I want you to picture um, a number and see how there's a problem, right? If you get 95 in one school, right, what does that 95 mean? What does a James Roos 95 mean versus a 95 from some other school or from another state or all those kinds of things, right? 95s mean different things because, you know, um, the kinds of assessments that you do are just different. You know some schools out there, they don't do trial exams. Can anyone think of why? Why don't they do trial exams? I'll give you two reasons. Students hate doing trial exams. And teachers hate writing and marking trial exams. It's a buttload of work, okay? Um, we still do them. Anyone know why? Because it's just the best way to prepare, to actually, you know, rehearse it just as if you were going to do the real thing. Three hours, all the same topics and so on, right? But if some schools do trials and some don't, how can the 95 be the same, right? Or in IPT, I have this massive amount of flexibility about the actual kinds of assessments and projects that I give my class, right? Um, and a lot of subjects are like that. Like, do you do an oral assessment or do you do a visual rep or, or whatever, okay? So 95 at one school and 95 at another, totally different. In the same way, this year, if you guys get 95, right, um, how can you compare that to a 95 from last year? What if, right, your exam turns out to be a killer? It's terrible, right? And you guys get 95, you know, um, Jonathan Zeng or something, by the blood, sweat and tears, he scores that. Whereas maybe last year or next year, the exam's just a breeze. And like half of you get 95. Well, how can you compare the two 95s? Uh, and you're seeing where I'm going here, right? So 95 in maths extension 1 versus 95 in 2 unit maths. Well, actually, it wouldn't be 95 for maths extension 1. It would be 47, I guess, because out of 50, okay? But clearly, those 95s are different, right? And you can multiply it across different subjects, right? So um, how do they deal with this problem? They do three things for three problems, okay? For the first two, they're dealt with by the Board of Studies, okay? They've got two processes. The first one, to deal with the difference between schools, they call it moderation. So they, um, they moderate the marks, that's what they call it. Uh, and to deal with the differences between years, the cohorts, they have a process that's called alignment. Um, the last problem, the problems with about comparing subjects, right? That's not dealt with by the Board of Studies because all they're interested in is getting the marks right for every individual subject, okay? This problem, because it's really a problem about considering multiple subjects together and coming up with 
Before an ATAR, you get something called an aggregate. So do you guys know about that? Yeah. So that's 500 bucks, it's your 10 best units. <coughs> so this is dealt with by UAC, okay? And the process, this is where, this is what most people think of as um, the process, they call this scaling, okay? Um, now, one more word for you. Sometimes these two processes, because they're done, number one, by the same group of people, and number two, they're done together. So even though number one, moderating happens, and then number two, alignment ha happens, you never see what happens in between here. The school doesn't see, we don't find that out. We just get the mark after it's been moderated and aligned, okay? So often those two processes are called one. Um, they're called well, mapping, basically. Um, so they get, the marks get mapped, by border studies and then UAC scales them accordingly.